the energy in a wave is proportional to its amplitude squared. So the power of a signal is proportional to the integral of the amplitude squared. What happens if you now look at this in the frequency domain? Almost nothing. The integral of the Fourier transform squared equals the integral of the original function squared up to an annoying factor of 2 pi. This is due to Parseval's identity. We see the, we'll see this identity in this video and we will also learn why it holds. So, what does it say? Integral of u squared with respect to psi equals integral uh, u hat of omega squared with respect to omega. Uh, up till the, to this annoying factor of 2 pi. So energy and the uh, time domain and frequency domain are well, the same up till again this annoying factor. Uh, why is that true? Well, what's the idea of the proof? Uh, you do a smart trick. You compute the convolution of u of xi and u bar of minus xi at equal zero in two different ways. So, and that will exactly yield this inequality, uh, this equality. Well, the first way is easy. Remember what the convolution was of f and g, f star g a of x, how do you get it? You have f of xi, uh, g of x of minus xi, you integrate with respect to xi from minus infinity to infinity. So what do we do? We set f of xi equals u of xi and g of xi equals u bar of minus xi, and furthermore we will set x equals zero. So what do we get then? Uh, u of xi star u bar of minus xi is zero, of course, and you get, here you get your u of xi, here you get your u bar of uh, uh, x plus xi, but you put x to zero, so you get your u bar of xi, so you get exactly now the left hand side over here, integral minus infinity to infinity of uh, modulus of u xi squared, integrated with respect to xi. Now the right hand side. Uh, for that we first compute the Fourier transform of this part over here. And why is that? Well, the Fourier transform of a convolution is very nice. It's the product of the Fourier transforms. So the Fourier transform of the convolution of u and u bar at minus xi is the Fourier transformation of u at times the Fourier transform of u bar of minus xi. So the first term of the product is easy, so let's focus on the second one. Fourier transform of u bar of minus xi. Just uh, uh, plug in the definition. How do you find this Fourier transform? You put e to the power minus i omega xi integrated with respect to xi, and now you have a u bar of minus xi. Now you do the following trick. Omega and xi are uh, real, so the complex conjugate of uh, e to the power uh, minus i omega xi is just e to the power i omega xi. So you can take this complex conjugate here, you can take it out and over the integral if you take an e to the power plus i omega xi over here. So the uh, integral uh, e to the power minus i omega xi u bar e to the power minus xi can becomes a complex conjugate of the integral where you integrate u of minus xi, but now with e to the power i plus i omega xi. Then, next step. You use a substitution rule, you want to have an uh, x prime over here, so you said x prime equals minus xi, a trick we have seen several times. Uh, the dx prime equals minus d xi, so that costs you a minus sign, but you also have to move the, boundary, uh, the boundaries. Uh, xi goes from minus infinity to infinity, so uh, x prime would go the other way around, I use the minus sign to put them back. Then here you get the u of x prime, dx prime, and in the exponent you get e to the power minus i omega x prime. And you see, hey, this Fourier transform of u bar at minus xi is exactly the Fourier transform uh, of the complex conjugate of uh, the complex conjugate of the u hat of omega. So what do you get? A Fourier transform of u bar of uh, u of xi star u bar is of course the uh, Fourier transform of u times the uh, complex conjugate of the Fourier transform of u yields uh, uh, the norm of uh, uh, u hat squared. 
So how do you now uh, get uh, this one over here back? You have the Fourier transform of uh, u star uh, u minus psi. You get the original one back by taking the inverse Fourier transform. So you have a 1 over 2 pi, integrate minus infinity to, to into infinity with respect to omega, and you have to add to each to the power i omega x. Uh, now we want to evaluate this in x equals 0, so that means that this factor cancels out here because you plug in x equals 0, so your u xi star u minus xi in 0 becomes 1 over 2 psi uh, two pi integral minus infinity to infinity modulus of u hat of omega squared, which is exactly the right hand side here. Now we have computed this quantity in two ways. We found this and we found this, uh, which means that those two are equal. So if you combine those, you get uh, integral uh, modulus of u xi squared xi equals modulus uh, norm of u hat of omega squared, the omega, uh, with this factor 1 over 2 pi.